Hey guys, what's happening? So I thought I'd show you a cheap alternative for uh, an expensive uh, ham radio power supply, or in my case, 3D printer. I mean, I do actually have ham radios too, so, um, but my power supply that I was using, we're running with my old printer bot here, it finally failed. And originally it was a converted uh, Dell power supply for like a computer, like one of those really small computers where they, you can't fit a power supply in it. Um, so I'd actually taken the cable and I modified it. And I'm not sure what those connectors are called. I think I've heard them be called Anderson. Not 100% sure, but I'm going to cut this cable off and reuse it. And then if you have a 3D printer, um, I designed this box. I'll be a link down below on my uh, Thingiverse page. But I designed it for uh, or two different kinds of power supplies. So in one of my side business, I actually fix 3D printers. So I come across a lot of power supplies. So I do a lot of upgrades. I'll get, I mean, I have a ton of these power supplies laying around. But they're actually per power supplies, usually for uh, like a ham radio. Um, so typically what I've seen, I've seen two different kinds of power supply. I've seen this passive power supply, which is not, there's no uh, cooling fan. Active and passive. So active means there's actually an active cooling fan. Passive means it's just air cooled. Um, but I did take, take this apart and you could make it active. There's actually a, uh, a connector on there. So if you wanted to put like a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt uh, fan on you could do that. But uh, here's my box, and what else we got here? So I also designed it for a couple of these little, um, you don't have to do that, but put a little rubber feet on there. But uh, like I said, I'm going to be designing two different bottoms for each power supply. So the power supplies, even though they're similar dimensions, actually have different hole patterns. Like the hole patterns on the bottom are different. That's why I got to make two different bottoms. So see this right here? These are different. So these are M3 and these are M4. Uh, plus the spacing is different. But on the other other lid, because actually part of the cooling fan is down below, I'm going to be creating vents on the side to allow airflow to come from the bottom up. So right now I think I'm going to use this passive one. Uh, just because uh, it, for this printer bot I don't need more than uh, 20 amps. So this thing pulls about 12 amps. Uh, because originally I had like a 10 amp, uh, like a little brick on there. And it was just overheating the brick. So, but this one finally failed. I think this was like 18 amps. Can't remember the exact amperage here. Yeah, 18 amps. So that one finally failed, so I had to, had to come up with a different solution. Um, yeah, because typically your your typical power brick, like they don't sell a power brick that's it's hard they're hard to find on Amazon that is more than like 12 to 14 amps. So I mean, it's definitely if you want something, you know, for 3D printer range. Um, it's, you need something bigger here. But the main reason is just the heated bed. The heated bed is actually what draws all the power on a 3D printer. You know, depending on how your stepper current is, you might be drawn, you know, maybe an amp or less per the separate, separate, uh, separate motors here. All right, so I'm kind of blabbering here, but uh, let me get this going here. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just keep this lid off. I don't, you know, this could actually also act as sort of a heat sink. I mean, the main heat sink is here though. The MOSFETs are actually connected to the side metal here. So I could see this as being another additional heat sink to draw the heat up, but um, so I'm just gonna leave it off. Oh yeah, then I uh, have this right here. Bought this on Amazon, put a link down below. And that's gonna go here in the front. And then I'm gonna be creating little, little back plates too. So I'm creating little back plates for a different sort of like a, like a banana connector. So a banana connector is like this. Um, I'll, I'll make a, like a double like positive negative banana connector. For me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this wire and reuse it. Because I like the length of the wire. I've already terminated it with the connectors. Uh, plus it has these uh, ferrules on it. That will actually uh, help with EMF. So, I get this thing mounted here. I gotta design a cover to to convert that over too. So, all right. So that's gonna go like that, like that, and then the case cover is gonna go like that. I was a little bigger than what I'd want, but you know, I don't have any more of these power supplies. Plus, it was kind of a headache to convert. Um. 
Yeah, because this 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 power supply is sort of like an ATX power supply. There needs to be a sense wire. It, it wants a, a sense like a I had, I had a solder and a resistor to like the, the the power supply wouldn't activate unless there was some sort of like a kind of like an ATX supply. Like it needed the five volt trigger. I won't go into details. I think I made another video about that. Can't remember. All right. When I'm ready to throw my old electronics away, I try to salvage as much as I can usually out of them. Like plastic screws and just random stuff, just that way I have it for projects. So I'm going to put a couple plastic screws down on that thing and they're gone. Alright, so that's the sense wire. Um, so that's what I was trying to describe before. So the power supply won't turn on unless it's connected to a motherboard. I, mean, I could have salvaged this connector and designed it around a separate switch, but I really liked how this thing was self contained. It was only like about four or five bucks, maybe six or seven, I can't remember. But it came pre-terminated, and uh, it also has a light, too, and a fuse. The fuse is not that important, there should already be a fuse right there. All right, so I created this little adapter plate, and it's actually going to be a two-piece two design where I screw together, and then just screws to here. Look at that, it pops in there. All right, I got some extensions on. Yeah, I like to solder everything. Train wrap. All right, got a wire down, got my positive, negative. Uh, that's ground, that's neutral, that's hot. Let's see if we can flip it around with one hand. Let's see, without ripping the wires apart. That can't do it. All right, got the feet in. Like I said, you don't have to have the feet. That was a nice touch. All right, power this thing up. All right, it's powered on. And before I connected to my main board and burn out my main board, I wanted to make sure the polarity was correct. Everything looks good. 12.4 volts. All right, let's see if I, this thing works. In the fan, but... All right, cool, awesome. All right, so if you want this stuff, uh, I'll put on my thing over down below and uh, the parts that I use and... But uh, yeah, it's cool. As you can, for, for a little amount of money, I mean, these things are super cheap, you know? You can get a pretty powerful uh, power supply. Uh, you can get a 40 amper for like 30 bucks. So that's a lot of power for pretty cheap. Main thing is just getting a box to put it in. So, all right, cool, awesome.